Welcome everyone to this Privacy Espresso. Today I'm joined by our expert from uh, Malta, from uh, the law firm Fennec and Fennec Advocates, uh, that is uh, Paul Gonzi. Uh, Paul is a partner um, of the firm and uh, together with him uh, we will discuss about uh, a recent decision affecting the responsibility in the iGaming uh, sector. So without further delay, I would like to thank Paul for being with us today and uh, Ask to him, uh, Paul, um, what's uh, the case about? Thank you, Alessandro, and thank you, Privacy Rules, for, for inviting me on this. It's, it's my pleasure, of course. Um, well, the case relates to a number of complaints filed pre GDPR in the UK against a gaming company which is licensed and operates from Malta. All right, so what is interesting to us is that this case reflects the difficulties when it comes to the interplay between the old legislative regime, the GDPR, and then that interplay with the rules on electronic communications and spam, which uh, for those of us listening in know that there is the EU directive regulating electronic communications and privacy, which has not yet been uh, amended into a new uh, regulation. And this case was tying in all, all of this together. And, and if I may, I think, by mistake, <laughs> because complaints were filed with the ICO in the UK by a number of complainants effectively receiving spam, unsolicited communications. Um, the ICO reported the matter to the IDPC in Malta because uh, the company was operating from Malta, um, but this company pushed the case away by trying to argue that I'm not responsible because I was not the data controller, I was not the one sending out those uh, electronic communications. Effectively, it is a third party with whom, yes, I had an agreement, this being an affiliate. An affiliate is typically a third party uh, organization, not forming part of uh, an operator of a gaming uh, platform, engaged to carry out a uh, form of marketing communication to attract players, to attract players who would then be introduced to the gaming operator, typically at a commission, as a thank you for introducing a player. The gaming uh, operator, in this case, the Malta-based entity said, listen, I was not responsible for that communication. I just engaged the affiliate to do what he felt he needed to do. The affiliate on his own steam sent out communications which were out of my control, then I'm sorry, I'm not responsible. But the IDPC, being the local data protection uh, regulator, um, concluded uh, that the company was incorrect to, to make this argument. It felt that the gaming operator was responsible because um, it managed the process, so to speak, and I will get into this. Um, and the sending of the e-communications by the affiliates was unlawful in terms of our local regulations in Malta, which transposed the directive on privacy and electronic communications. It's pretty much a lock, stock and barrel transposition of the directive. The IDPC concluded on that basis and found that the local organization, therefore the local operator, was responsible and subjected the company to a fine. The company appealed the decision, and this is where it all becomes somewhat interesting. So in Malta, you can appeal a decision of the authority, of the commissioner, the data protection commissioner, uh, before what we call a tribunal. That is the first stage type of appeal, and after you can go before the Court of Appeal. Okay, so there are two levels of instances. We have a decision of last year from the Court of Appeal. So next, let's go back to the tribunal stage, right? Um, the, the, the company appealed the decision of the Data Protection Commission. Okay, so it argued, it argued, I was not a data controller in that instance. The tribunal, very interestingly, starts looking at a number of points to try and to determine whether the gaming company could have been responsible, so the operator in Malta. And the, fact, the facts or the circumstances which it looked at were first, um, the definitions of personal data and data controller in terms of GDPR. So this is already one issue. The IDPC in its decision had not referred to GDPR, it had referred to the local regulations which existed pre-GDPR regulating privacy in, in electronic communications. Um, the tribunal then said to determine 
responsibility, I must look at the substance of the clauses and see how this issue was being treated in the clauses and look at guidelines relating to the online gaming industry in Malta and processing of personal data issued on the date of entry of GDPR in May 2018, which relates to the industry. In those guidelines, you find a nice section in which the IDPC, in conjunction with the Malta Gaming Authority, explain the concept of an affiliate and the responsibilities and what you need to look out for vis-a-vis processing of personal data and the, the hat that you're wearing. Are you wearing the hat of a controller? Are you a processor? Or are you potentially a joint controller? So effectively, the tribunal referred to those guidelines. Those were the main factors. It then moved on to say that, listen, by looking at the clauses, I'm realizing that between the parties, the gaming operator tried to put responsibility only on the affiliate. So in this in this agreement with the affiliate, the gaming operator was being declared as not being a data controller and not being a data processor. And there was a limitation of liability effectively saying that the operator will not be liable But in case of any breach of data protection legislation, it will be the affiliate company that will be held responsible alone. The tribunal said, listen, I'm taking this into account and I want to remind data controllers that they have to demonstrate compliance in accordance with GDPR. So again, we went back to GDPR uh, yet again. Conclusion, the tribunal said, listen, to me, it is very clear that looking at all of this, you were a data controller and you were therefore responsible for the processing and the, the electronic communications that were sent out. The company was, of course, not happy with this outcome, and it went to the Court of Appeal and raised a number of points. The first was, listen, the tribunal is referring to GDPR. This has nothing to do with GDPR. If anything, we need to refer back to the old laws that existed pre-GDPR, so pre-2018. So that is number one. For some reason, the Court of Appeal also said that although the old law applies, in truth, the definitions of controller and processor are more or less the same, similar to those of GDPR. Therefore, the parties could not have suffered a real prejudice by having referred to the old laws. And therefore, I will continue with my assessment, despite the fact that the tribunal made reference to GDPR, which it should not have done. The Court of Appeal also focused on these points. So, affiliate program, terms and conditions, if they are established by the data controller, then there is a very important link which makes the gaming operator responsible for what the affiliate is doing. A very important concept which the Court of Appeal considered is that of instigation. Did you instigate what the third party has done? And was that done on your behalf? If that is the case, then you are responsible as data controller because you are determining the purposes and the means for which the affiliate is processing the personal data. Lastly, the Court of Appeal said, listen, it's not about ownership of the database. What interests me is whether you as a gaming operator had control over the means and the purposes of the data processing. And the Court of Appeal also looked at the contractual clauses between the parties and found that you know, where the, date, where the operator, for instance, emphasized that the responsibility for breaches shall be those of the affiliates, the Court of Appeal said then, you see, you had an interest in what the affiliate was doing, and that link brought the Court of Appeal to confirm liability on the gaming operator in Malta. Lastly, however, in the conclusion, the Court of Appeal focuses on the most relevant point that should have been focused on from point A, which is that electronic communication services and what is regulated by the old legislative regime. In there, it speaks of the sender of the electronic communications, and that is what should have been assessed by the IDPC, by the Tribunal and the Court of Appeal. This point in particular goes to show that it's not what you state in your contract which counts, it's what it actually is that counts. So it's useless that two parties decide to say, I'm not responsible, I'm not a controller. You need to stop to think of the relationship that you're creating and whether you have any particular control on the processing activities that will be happening, even if they will be happening by a third party.
Perfect. Thank you very much, Paul, for being with us uh, today for this very interesting case that, uh, that uh, we discussed. Um, I would like also to thank all our uh, listeners uh, and uh, thank you very much all uh, and uh, see you very, very soon again. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Alessandro.